Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to recover an underexposed photo, whether that was done on purpose or on accident. So to start off, we're going to go with the on accident photo, and it's not even that underexposed. It's just kind of a normal level of underexposure. It just kind of happened with the camera being set to auto ISO, um, which typically I tend to shoot at just because I don't really want to worry too much about settings when I'm shooting. I'd rather worry about the model's expression and getting my framing right and not have to worry too much about the technical side. All right, so we actually have two options with what we can do to this photo. We can either just crank the exposure up and say this is about maybe a two-thirds of a stop uh, underexposed. So what we can do is just put in 0.66 and crank it up like that. Or the other option is we can actually just crank up the shadow slider on Lightroom, which creates a slightly different effect. Because what happens is when you, you move exposure up, everything brightens up. Everything in the image is gonna change. If you just use shadows here, you'll see it kind of just brings those out and it keeps the rest of it in the background the same. Now, I do find sometimes I like to actually brighten the whole thing up just because this tends to start to look a little HDR-ish, which isn't always a bad thing, but certain people have a very strong uh, distaste for HDR-looking imagery. So keep that in mind. So I, I think what I would like to do is kind of just play with this balance here a little bit. So I'm going to increase the blacks a little, maybe increase my whites a tiny bit, or highlights, and same with whites. And if we actually go ahead and go to the history here, we can see where we started and where we are now. And that it would be significantly different than if we were to, let's go ahead and just kind of clear this out. And then let's just give it that 0.66 exposure boost. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the differences between this two. So let's go ahead and go back to where we were with the just raising the shadows and all the sliders and looking at where we're actually at with exposure. And you'll notice it's quite a significant difference. This uh, raise, just raising the shadows and such is a much more flat uh, look to it because if you notice like the highlights and the shadows on the face, it doesn't actually quite have as much contrast and pop to it as this. So the first thing to figure out is whether or not you want to raise your exposure or fix your uh, sliders down here. So the second thing, um, let's go ahead and go back to this because I like to control this a little bit more. Uh, I'm gonna actually raise up my shadows a tiny bit more here. And now you can also, instead of only doing it this way, what you can do is you can use exposure in conjunction with this. So say we just wanna raise it up just a tiny bit more to get a little extra boost. You can add that and it just kind of multiplies the effect. So actually, I do like that with that little extra bit of exposure. So let's go ahead and tweak our white balance here because I think it's a little cold for me. And I like it about there. And let's go ahead and tweak that tint as well. And I stayed at zero. <laughs> Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you just have to rock the slider around to realize that. Now, I always like to add a little bit of clarity between 7 and 10 to add a little pop to the image because clarity, all it really does is add mid-tone contrast. You can overdo it, and it'll make it look kind of crunchy and nasty, but if you just use like 10 or under, it see, it just adds that nice little pop to all the colors. So that's how we would fix it overall, but I kind of want to go through like a couple edits just to kind of show you a full process for each of these images so you kind of get an idea of what I would want to do with something that was underexposed. And like I said, this one was kind of a natural underexposure, but the next three I underexposed on purpose to save my highlights. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of play with this and tone it a little bit more. And now to kind of brighten it up overall, we're just going to kind of raise up that orange just because I want to end up getting a little more punch to it in the background and the skin tones. I want them to kind of come through a bit more. So I'm going to raise up orange. I'm also going to raise up yellow a little bit. And now let's go ahead and toggle that. And that's the difference that that made, just kind of playing with the HSL. And then if we include the clarity, we'll see everything that that did. So it really just kind of brought a lot more uh, life and contrast to it. Now, one thing when you raise an exposure of a underexposed image is you have to worry about noise. So what we are going to do is scroll down here, go into where it says detail, and then let's go ahead and zoom in on the image. 
and I am very far zoomed in. But as you'll see, there's not too much noise in the shadow here, but what we could do is just kind of give it a little bit of noise reduction. And you'll see that's making just the tiniest bit of difference. If we go ahead and go up a little bit more, we'll see a bigger shift. See, and it just kind of clears it up. So like I said, this was just kind of a basic uh, camera setting. like. I had an auto ISO, it kind of misjudged a little bit, but now we're gonna look at some more dramatic examples and how to fix those. So let's quick go over to this image and you'll see it is really, really dark. Now, one thing some people don't know about Lightroom is if you touch this right here, this little triangle on the left and right of the histogram, what happens is this one will toggle and show you where your highlights are blown and you'll see right there by that red spot, that is a pure white area. And then if we toggle this one here, you'll see that those down there are pure black. So pure black is blue and pure white is red. So that is a really easy way to actually check and see where you still have dynamic range or where you've lost it. Uh, so pretty much the only areas we're not gonna be able to recover is this area down here and these rocks and that area in the sun. But other than that, we can kind of move this file all the way around and have it really flexible for us. So first thing we're gonna do to recover this is we're just going to crank the shadows way up and and we want to do that because we won't actually be able to see where we're starting to edit here so now that that's cranked up i would like to go ahead and raise the actual overall exposure as i mentioned before combining using the exposure with these sliders actually helps a lot so now that we've raised the exposure we're starting to lose our lovely color in the sky so let's go ahead and drop our highlights to kind of keep that really dark, rich, uh, contrasty color in the back. And let's go ahead and pull the whites down just a little bit as well. Go ahead and raise the blacks and add a little bit of contrast. And now let's adjust our white balance because before when it's just like a really dark image, you can't tell what white balance you actually want. And I kind of like it with a little more magenta because we start to get that kind of nice purpley kind of color down in the waves here. So I want to actually go ahead and raise this a little more just because I think that it is still a little too underexposed in the shadow areas. And let's put in our clarity. Get a little more punch. And maybe raise the exposure a tad bit more. and drop those highlights again to compensate. And I think we're looking pretty good. Now, let's go back to noise. And as we zoom in, you can see this is very, very, very grainy. So I'm gonna back off just a tad bit because no one's gonna look at your image that close up, but I wanted to show you in that last one just how it affected it close up. So what we're gonna do is go back down in this detail here, and then we're gonna crank our noise reduction up to about 40. And for images like this, and keep in mind, I'm on a five-year-old Canon 5D Mark III, so this will be a lot easier if you're on a more updated camera. Um, I know a lot of cameras nowadays have way better dynamic range and can do this much easier than mine. So as we can see, that definitely helped our noise problem out, but you can still see there's this color banding. So what we wanna do is we wanna take this color down here, or this little slider under noise reduction says color, and slide it up to about 50 and that should help us clear up that kind of blotchy color in that area. So let's go ahead and just look at the difference that the noise reduction did. So this is with no noise reduction at all, and this is with the luminance and color noise reduction. And you'll see we still have most of our details there with minimal, uh, if, with minimal noise now. So um, I actually think we could tweak this a little bit more because I'm thinking it's not contrasty enough. So instead of using the contrast slider, which we've already pumped up, I wanna use the tone curve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click here and drag it down a little bit. Not a lot, just a tiny bit to add some contrast. And I'm gonna drag this up here. And drag this up here a little bit. And I'm thinking that I actually wanna raise that point a little, so I'm gonna add a th third point or fourth point. Oops. OK, 
getting a little too dark. So you you want to just keep an eye on it and kind of just keep blending until you're happy with what you see. Um, that went way too high when I actually released, so. All right, let's go ahead and see the difference there. So that's before all the little curve adjustment and that's after. And it's it's very subtle, but it definitely kind of brings a little more brightness into it and makes it pop a bit more. So let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at that and see it's still actually a pretty nice file. There's a little bit of noise in the shadow still, but it's not too bad and it doesn't look horrible. So now we're going to move on to our next image. And this one is also underexposed because I wanted to save the sky. So we're going to go ahead and start with the same thing and raise up our shadows all the way and get a lot of that detail back. And you can see it's already looking pretty good. And this one, we probably won't need to even tweak our exposure at all because I actually really like the way this looks already. And then let's, oops, I accidentally grabbed my exposure. And then let's go ahead and drag down these highlights to get a little more detail back in that sky. That's why we underexposed in the first place. Let's just save that detail. And then let's play with the whites a little bit. See, do we want to increase them or decrease them? Now, one thing about using the white slider is you have to pay attention to highlights that you raised out of the shadows because it'll affect those as well. So if you notice that highlight on the side of her face is actually moving as I adjust this and it's dimming the overall contrast. So I think I'm actually going to go ahead and increase the whites just a bit. And then blacks, I'm actually going to lower to get a little more contrast in the image overall. So as of now, I'm actually really happy with where this image is. So if we go ahead and hit our backslash key, which is the uh, Lightroom shortcut for before and after, we can see the difference that we've made so far. And I think I might want to add a little more contrast, even though I said I was happy with it. Now that I toggle it, I think we could probably do with that clarity. Just that tiny little boost to it. Yeah, see, it just made the face pop out a lot more. So let's go ahead and zoom in now, check our noise levels, which are going to be bad uh, because this was underexposed. Luckily, this is at ISO 100, so it's still really good noise levels, uh, but there is definitely some noise here that needs to be handled. So let's go ahead and go down into details once more, raise up our noise reduction to about 25, see the difference that makes, then go ahead and double color all the way to 50. and that has cleared it up dramatically. And I don't always like to use noise reduction unless I'm doing something like this where I'm recovering from the shadows. I never use this, but it is so useful if you're trying to really push the limits of your sensor. And as I mentioned before, this is really kind of an older camera. Uh, five years is a lot of time in technology. I know there's a lot of people who are working with less than I am, but still I constantly battle with the limits of this sensor. So. I'm going to go ahead and back out and then we're going to switch to our next one, which is a bonus of a landscape just because I figured, you know, the technique is still applicable and I mean, it's not really a landscape. It's just a nice view of the Santa Monica pier, but uh, I just wanted to show you that if you shoot landscape, this does still apply to you. You still can save more dynamic range in the sky by underexposing and then bringing it back up. So I'm going to go ahead and raise the shadows all the way. Uh, actually, maybe not all the way. Let's go to like 80. And then let's raise our blacks a little bit. And pull the whites down a little. Pull the highlights down to get a little more color in the sky. And actually, let's raise our exposure just a tiny bit here. And then pull the highlights down a lot further. And then let's go ahead and add our clarity. As I said, I love clarity. And let's put in some contrast as well. And now let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at the shadow area we really recovered from a lot. And you'll see there is some noise in the fence here. So let's go ahead and go down to our details panel. Raise up noise reduction, something like 25, color to 50, 
and I think that's still a little kind of grainy. So I actually want to raise up my noise reduction a little bit more. Let's do something more like 40. And now because we've done quite a bit of noise reduction, what's actually happening is we're losing a bit of sharpness. Uh, so what we can do is now that we've actually applied that, we can raise our sharpening amount here. And it will bring a little bit of the noise back, but for the most part, it's just going to kind of sharpen up those fine details. And really, you're not going to notice it too much from all the way back at full viewing distance. So let's go ahead and toggle our before and after on that as well. And that is how you can recover a landscape as well. So I hope this is able to help you guys out. If it was, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. Feel free to share this on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.